The Holy Bible says that we are all one body with many different parts, where everyone has a role to play. Understand how God functions in meticulous order in Tenfold Ministry, available at TatePublishing.com. Make a clear path for the Lord to travel. Doing so will clear your paths of the snares that would hinder you from fulfilling your call to ministry. Find out how in Straight Path for the Lord. Available at TatePublishing.com Romans 5 verses 3 through 5 And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance proven character and proven character hope and hope does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out within our hearts through the holy spirit who was given to us now i mean did you you just i mean i want to keep this scripture up because i want you to really look at this and i want you to really pay attention to this line of scripture because it's very significant i mean how is it that Paul, and, and you got to understand about Paul, Paul is, is arguably the most humble of all men in the Holy Bible. See, Paul was, was, was a, a murderer of Christians. He, he was the exact opposite. Of, I mean, he was, I mean, no one was more an, antagonist, more of an, an antagonist than, than Paul. Paul was a Pharisee, the, the son of a Pharisee. He was well studied. He was a second generation Pharisee. He was schooled to be a Pharisee, a, 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 to be a teacher of the law since he was born. He was bred to, to understand and, and govern by the law. He was bred for it. He knew all about it. He, he is, was well learned. He stunder, studied under, under uh, Gamamel. And Gamamel was a, a, the most respected of teachers in the in, in the land at the time and you know Paul studied under him now how humble would you have to be to go from a place of of being you know the I mean pretty much I'm just going to make it plain to being the man in regard to to, to the law in regard to the Pharisees, you, you know, you like the young gun of the Pharisees, you know, you, you, you holding the clothes of those who stoned Stephen and to be this guy who was the selected, the chosen one among the Pharisee. And then all of a sudden get a, have an encounter with God on, on or the Lord on the road to Damascus and then have your whole life changed. His humbling started at that very second. You know, he was he was stricken with blindness for three days. He, I mean, he went from seeing and could not see. So he had scales over his eyes. And 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 you got to understand, at some point, if you you're a person who were was able to see and could see and, and and you know did all these things, and at an instant, a second, you had an encounter with the Lord, and then you were stricken, you were stricken with blindness. How humble. I mean, that's where his, his humility started. This is where the humility started. Then he went to Ananias and he said, he said, will you go and, and lay hands on this man and, and, and heal him? And you got to understand what happened was, you know, the Lord told this man that Paul is my servant and he would have to suffer for my name's sake. He would suffer for my name's sake. You know, I mean, I, I don't really sound glorious to me if you think about it. You know, the Lord's coming to you and he's saying, this guy, you have to suffer for my name's sake. Well, isn't that what Jesus told the disciples all during his ministry about the cross that they would have to carry with him? Didn't he say that? What about old Siren of Cyrene who, who was just walking along the path when they was walking Jesus up to, to Golgotha to nail him to the cross? And they said, you here, you Simon of Cyrene, you come along. You carry the cross of Christ Jesus. He ain't had nothing to do with it. It wasn't his, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you know, they were, they was crucifying Jesus Christ. They wasn't keep crucifying Simon at Cyrene, but he had a command by the Roman soldiers. They say, you there, Simon, Cyrene, come grab his cross and help him carry it up the hill. It wasn't fair. 
It wasn't fair. He didn't do nothing. But you know what? He had to help and carry that cross. As apostolic ministers of the gospel, we are called to suffer and carry the cross. The scripture explains it. Put it up once again. I just want to go through that and, and just go through this process, the, the process of humbling. And this is, you know, Paul defines the process of humbling in these two lines of scripture. Let's, let's just put it back up for a second because I want, I, want, I want you to look at this. I want, to, I want you to really get this and place it into your spirit. But the scripture says, it says tribulations, and I'm just paraphrasing. It says we must glory in tribulation. I can get glory and tribulation, but he said your tribulation will work of patience and, and you need patience in order to have a relationship with God. And then he said, and patience experience. And then as you're a patient, you would then gain the experience of going through. That means you know how to handle going through your tribulation. You understand that? You get that? And this is, this is where we put it together. Our experience builds hope. Now, how can I experience build hope? How can, and he just told you how. It starts with tribulation. Tribulation then builds your patience, and then it, your patience builds your experience, and then your experience builds your hope. And then Paul says, and hope make them not ashamed. Because the love of God is shielded abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And I'm, I know I got the, the New American Standard up, but I'm, I'm actually reading that from the King James. So you get, a, you get two different pictures of the scripture. I want you to understand it. But you understand that your tribulations, they don't necessarily happen for you. You know, they, they're, your tribulations happen for you to get something out of it. You know, you know, your suffering is not necessarily just because you did something bad. Your suffering is because the Lord is trying to build patience, a perfect patience in you. He's trying to build endurance in you because guess what? If you don't have patience, how can you minister to God's people? You're going to minister to people who are who are just at all different types of levels you're going to have to minister to people who are who are just new from new saved to strong minded stiff neck you know uh, Pharisees or, or what to speak people people who have studied law and studied religion and you have to be patient in order to get this word that's given to your cross in order to get the, the teaching across you know you're teaching with a level of authority that's given by the Lord and your level of authority can only be given, be given through humility. And this is Paul, he's, he's laying it out to us. He's showing us how to get this humility. He says, man, you got to go through some tribulations. I'm telling you, Paul, not this Paul, but the Paul in the Bible knew all about tribulations. Man, if you don't, if you don't know about Paul's tribulations, he'll tell you later. And I'll go through the scripture later, but read the book of Acts. If you get in the book of Acts, you'll know, you'll read all about the tribulations of Paul. I mean, Paul went through some stuff for, you know, like Jesus said, he said he will suffer for my namesake. He ain't asked for it. He just, you know, he ain't asked for it. It's just what he was called to. And the Lord knew what he was called to. And he knew what he placed in him. He knew that he, he would have the, the, the ability to persevere, to, to go through all the tribulations. And therefore, it built hope in him. See, Paul didn't have the luxury of walking around with Jesus Christ in the flesh. He didn't get to see all his miracles. He wasn't like the other, you know, the other 11 apostles who were able to walk and touch and speak to and caress and hug and hold Jesus Christ. He had to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit of God. He had to strictly rely on his temptation. So you understand, you know, I mean, if you compare the, the apostolic ministries of Paul and, and, and Peter and John, Peter, you know, he suffered, he suffered some, 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 you know, he had to go through some tribulations, but his tribulation was nowhere near the level that Paul suffered. And if you look at it, Paul represents the hope that that was given by Christ Jesus. Now, you know, the Lord, 
you know, he built this church on, 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 the, on the backbone of faith, hope, and love. And you understand that the three apostles called to the end time ministry that he would build his church upon. These three types of apostles would represent those three. See, John represented love. He was the he was the, the, the disciple or apostle that Jesus loved. He gave him the task of caring for his mother after he was nailed to the cross. He represented love. He would. He, the Lord is building the back of His church on love, on faith. You understand that Peter was the one with the great faith. He believed God. He believed Him so much so that he actually stepped out of the boat and walked on water. He believed Him so much. He sunk. Yeah, he took a couple steps and he sunk. But he had enough faith to get out the boat and actually step on, walk on, take steps upon the water. And Jesus told him he, he he recognized Christ. He was the first to 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 openly show and say that you are the Christ. He called Jesus the Christ. He's and, and, and Jesus told him that revelation couldn't come by you. It had to come from the Holy Spirit of God. You understand? He represented faith. Now now we got hope, and and and, and I'm telling you. Paul is going to tell us all about acquiring this hope. And he said the only way to acquire this, this pure hope that, that cannot be made a shame is to go through a period of tribulation. The Holy Bible says that we are all one body with many different parts where everyone has a role to play. Understand how God functions in meticulous order in Tenfold Ministry, available at TatePublishing.com. Make a clear path for the Lord to travel. Doing so will clear your paths of the snares that would hinder you from fulfilling your call to ministry. Find out how in Straight Path for the Lord, available at TatePublishing.com.